to EnvoyCon, uh, our, our first one. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, our goal today, if you're on Twitter, is to make everyone jealous that they're not here. So the hashtag is hash EnvoyCon. Um, and welcome, everyone. You know, as I've said uh, multiple times, I, I really cannot believe that so many people are here, wanted to come. We've had people that are, you know, try, trying to get in that couldn't get a ticket. Uh, and when we first talked about doing a conference, I first thought that uh, you know no one would submit a CFP, and then we got tons of CFPs, and they were all awesome. And then I thought no one would actually want to come to the conference, and then we sold out. We got a bigger room, we sold that out, and uh, it's just it's a testament to the the larger community that people are so excited about this. Uh, so I I am so thrilled, and I'm so happy that you're all here. This is fantastic. Um, I hope that most people here know what Envoy is, uh, but just on the, on the off chance that you don't, and just to set some expectations for the rest of the day, I'm just going to spend uh, you know, 30 or 60 seconds talking a little bit about the Envoy project and, and what it's all about. And uh, fundamentally, Envoy is a network proxy. Uh, you know, the goal of Envoy is that the network should be transparent to applications. Uh, and you know, like I say in most of my talks, you know, we, we develop infrastructure, uh, but our goal as infrastructure engineers is to get out of the way and to hopefully allow people to, to focus on their business logic. Uh, so you know, the, the goal of Envoy, even though itself is not a, a simple project by any means, the goal of Envoy is to uh, you know, allow an abstraction that allows higher layer uh, systems to be built that can make the network transparent to end users. Um, so I thought it would be fun, actually, to talk a little bit just about the, the, the project history. And incredible to me, it spans almost four years now, which is, which is pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, we start and we go back to, sorry, that's going to be a little, little small to see on, on this side screen, but we go back to uh, around the beginning of May of 2015. Uh, this was the first commit for what would eventually become Envoy uh, in Lyft's private repo. And fun, fun fact, I originally was going to call it uh, Lyft Proxy, but someone at, at Lyft said, you know, we shouldn't call it Lyft Proxy. We should have some better name that people would like. So I got out the thesaurus and I searched for proxy and there was Envoy and I said, let's call it Envoy. So that's, that's, that's why it's called Envoy. Um, but yeah, so this was back in 2015 on the tail of the work that I had done back at Twitter, you know, seeing some of the, some of the issues that we had had there with uh, Twitter's service-to-service uh, -service system as well as its edge proxy. Uh, and started on, on Envoy really right when I came to Lyft. And you know, fast forward through 2015, we actually went from, uh, I think Envoy went into production at Lyft for the first time in around September of 2015. So that was four months from empty repo to production. Uh, and obviously Envoy back then was a much simpler system. We were just using it for edge proxy. Uh, but even at that very early stage, uh, you know, we were already seeing some of the benefits over the existing solutions, uh, particularly around observability, and, and that was really fantastic to see. So throughout you know, 2015 and into early 2016, we were focused entirely on Lyft. We were beginning to roll out the service mesh, adding all kinds of features, you know, focusing on our couple hundred of internal developers. Uh, and you know, I think that's one of the things that has made Envoy so successful is that we built the product for developers at Lyft. We operated Envoy at Lyft. We were on call for Envoy at, at Lyft. So uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, like personal effort to make it a system that we could operate at, at scale uh, and also to satisfy real, real problems that people at Lyft were actually happening. So starting, uh, you know, towards the uh, first or second quarter of 2016, you know, we were saying we built this awesome thing. Let's let's go and let's actually open source it. People in the community can can hopefully benefit from this. So this takes us towards uh, mid 2016. Uh, the first commit into the open source repo was on August 8th, 2016, uh, and then we eventually announced our open sourcing in September of 2016. 
And, uh, you know, it was an incredibly difficult ride to actually go through and, and do this. Uh, I remember I, I took a docucation uh, where I spent, like, I think 80 hours over two weeks writing all the documentation in the initial Envoy open source release, Documentation Matters, uh, doing all the blog posts and a bunch of other stuff, and it was, uh, it was pretty, pretty awesome. And you know, pretty quickly uh, when we open sourced, it was it was pretty fantastic. We had uh, you know a lot of interest from our friends over at Google, also a bunch of other companies, and, and things continued to grow pretty quickly. Uh, this is a photo representation of me. Uh, it would be this one or or me in the fetal position for most of 2017. Uh, 2017 was the most difficult year of my life by, by far uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, Envoy was like a, uh, a startup that blew up and you know I was doing uh, CEO, chief marketing officer, PR, all of those things and 2017 was, was nuts. It just went from uh, trying to grow this thing and, and keep uh, quality and a bunch of other stuff and, and uh, you know, try to make it more sustainable. And, and to see all of you out here today is just incredible to me that we have gone from this photo to, you know, this larger, larger community, and it's, it's just fantastic. So uh, towards the end of 2017, we joined CNCF. Uh, that's been, it's been great. Uh, it's been great to have the code uh, in a neutral home. It's been great you know, to, to have a, uh, a license or a copyright that is compatible for all the people that are building great stuff. And then fast forward uh, into just recently, we became a graduated project within the CNCF. Uh, that's a vote of confidence that you know, the project isn't going to go anywhere. Uh, you know, it's ready for enterprise use. We have a sustainable community, and that's fantastic. And you know, looking forward now, when I look around at all of you and all of the cloud vendors and all of the end users and all of the startups and all of the people that are building products on, on Envoy, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, it really is absolutely incredible. And I, I've loved watching all of the things that people have, have built. Super amazing. Um, you know, it, it's, it's no surprise, but we've really had uh, adoption across the entire industry uh, in only about two years. I, the question now is often who is not using Envoy or who is not planning on using Envoy. And, and just to see this type of adoption in such a short period of time is just Absolutely fantastic. So, you know, super quickly, just uh, in terms of, you know, why has Envoy become popular? Um, I think, you know, we have focused a lot on performance. We've focused on, you know, making sure that tail latency uh, stays, uh, stays low. Um, we have, even with the community growth, we have kept uh, our focus on reliability, rigorous code review, testing, uh, just really focusing on, on making sure that master stays, stays safe. Uh, modern code base, you know, compared to some of our competitors, uh, just, you know, being a, a GitHub focused product and, uh, you know, just focusing on that modern, modern stuff um, has been great for us. Uh, extensibility, we allow extensions at, at almost every, every layer of the uh, code base, and that's allow people to consume the core and then build really a, a flabbergasting amount of products on, on, on top, which is great. Uh, you've heard me talk about it in talks, but just observability, 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 just building that base by which people can build higher layer systems you know, that allow them to introspect what's going on has been very powerful. Uh, our XDS configuration APIs have been very powerful, allowing that decoupling of control plane and data plane, uh, seeing just the, the plethora of control planes that people have been building have been, again, really fantastic. And I'll talk about it, but really the, the biggest thing is all of you, just you know, this, this larger community coming together has been fantastic. So let's just talk really briefly about that. Um, Envoy, as you all know, there's no paid version, there's no premium version, and, and this has been, I think, the reason that Envoy has become so popular. Uh, it's allowed us to make technology-first decisions. Uh, it's allowed us to you know, not worry about cannibalizing some business model. We can focus on what's right for the user. 
But most importantly, Envoy has become a core via the APIs, via the extensions, via a bunch of other things that are allowing all of you to build products and services and other things on, on top. And that has made it sustainable. And that's what's so incredible about it. And uh, you know, my, my plug here for uh, you know, always being on the lookout for new contributors and new maintainers, and I, I, I had to put a photo of my kid wearing his Envoy, Envoy onesie. But um, you know, it, it's really, it's, it's all of you uh, that I think have made this project so successful. Um, and we're always looking for new people to contribute, new people to help with maintenance. Um, and you know, I just wanted to thank all of you for coming. I'm so excited for all of the talks. I think they're gonna be fantastic. So thank you.